you know what? We are nearly done with Dyson DC24. We've, we've just got to put this together. And that, 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 and this, and that, and this, and that, that, this, that, 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 that. Simple. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? Move that back because obviously there is a, a, a way to do this that doesn't just involve blind ignorance. On, oh, I know. Yes, this is the last video. Well, the video of actually doing stuff to the Dyson DC24. Yes, we are nearly at the stage where we can call it done. Just got a few little bits to do, which is basically nail everything back onto the chassis. And we'll start with the wiring, specifically the spinal wiring, because it gets fed through first with the changeover valve clamps it all in. You see, well, it doesn't. You can sort of do it, but it makes it a lot easier to do it here. First you feed through, check your ends, this goes to the motor, all of these go to the switches. Then, now if you remember from the first, this would be the first video of this one, where we had to pull the cable through past this very big clip, well guess what, we've got to pull it through again, haven't we? This is very difficult to show on camera, <laughs> because I, I, I can't have it Oh, there we go. So look something like that. You get the idea. Then we can push it, maybe with the help of a small pushy screwdriver, just to make sure it's really in there, because it has to be out of the way. Then we can carry on, and you'll know it's right, because all of the previous bends of the cable will line up with where they need to go. Okay, look. And we'll leave that like that because we've got to obviously put stuff into it. Next up is this little hose, this little seal, this little thing, and that's it actually. This is the changeover valve for the suction. So obviously when you move the machine, this valve moves with it. The first thing to do is to put its seal on. So obviously when it moves, well not this actually, it moves this, this, this thing just goes all day long. Then we push the hose on. Now I don't think this one's too bad. In fact it's more this hose. They get bashed up and you can then twist it so that the nice part is on show. We don't need to do that with this particular hose. Once you push the hose on, this part here has to be poking out of this part here. You simply fiddle it in, and you'll see one of the clips will go in fine, the other one will just need a little bit of persuasion. There we go. Then, and again, you might just screw job just to push the back of the hose up until it goes on to there and now obviously this moves with the changeover valve we have our hose talking at the changeover valve we shall put that on now and this is simply a case of remembering which way round it goes and pushing it on and it does eventually sort of clip into place. There we go, look, you'll know it ball because that part there will line up in there. Then you take your three screws, one, two, three, and get them in before you drop it and have to do all of that again. Because it's great fun. 
when you have to do it all again in fact oh wait there is another part that we I think need to put this spring in oh there we go that spring goes in here hey Corby normally ignore me ignore me I'm doing this a little bit by memory <laughs> I have to say this isn't I'm not you know I'm not East Bears or Manchester Vax who do either do hundreds of these a day or you know plan script think about their videos you know me well enough by now there we go that's the changeover valve in obviously we're missing a key part that makes everything move which is this clear plastic wheel and the way to do this is to slide it onto the rod first Then making sure that it, the peg for the release for that little hose is sat inside that groove. There, take the screw for this part and the screwdriver to fit it because this is a smaller screw. And there we go. Now it should all move very nicely, which it does. Obviously, when you push the hose in, it pushes this flap down. That then moves everything around as it should. Oh, I just pulled that seal off a little bit. Whoops. Ah, deal with that in a bit. So, we're at this stage now, we are starting to have its legs. Now we need this part, and now we do need this spring because it clamps on. And do you know what? I can't for the life of me remember which way round it actually goes I think it's that way and then yes I think it's that way if this is wrong we've got to take this all apart again <laughs> when we do the pedals and oh, I've got my tripod in shot how unprofessional not moving it now yeah, you've got to keep that spring on because when you push this bit home and it pushes home, it lines itself up on the bottom and the top. It's then sandwiched into there. So you want to be a little bit careful. I don't need that shit. You're way, way off being fitted, my boy. We can start to put the screws in. There's one underneath. One on the side. Come on. <laughs> and the last one is on the top in plain view of everything. And now we have both sides ready nearly to accept the motor. First, we need to put the red and well wheels on. Red wheels, red pedal and wheels. And the way to do this is we put the wheels on first. Make, make sure they're the right way around. <laughs> From this angle we want this. Because one side slots in and the other side goes over there. It's ever so fiddly because when one side goes, the other side tries to move. There we go. Gotcha. And we shall find our left hand brake pedal screw. And don't forget, because we put our little asterisks on the screw cards, our plastic washer. Yes. Of course you remembered that, didn't you? No, I didn't think you would. That's all very, very good, but now we need to do this spring. And this is where, if it's the wrong way round, 
we have to undo some of our work. Because if it's the wrong way around, it just binds up a treat. I think that is correct. Because it springs and snaps, and it also it looks really stupid actually. Because it all binds itself up in there and looks awful. But I think it's wrong. No, it's binding up. But I don't know if it all did bind up. Have to keep going. If it goes wrong, I promise you, I will not show you in real time. Me doing because you know what? I should have a drink because I should tell you this little tale. Got some lemon. Look, it's in the first time I've done a DC24 video, and it was about at this stage last time that it all went wrong. And again, I got into a strop and bid the lot, got rid of it all. I got really cross that I got it wrong. I was a lot younger then. So we shall see. The red pedals, you slot them in there, and then, ah, I didn't even show you that. Push that side in, then this side lines up, and again you get your red pedal screw and washer. Then there's one on the other side here. Because if you don't again, you move it slightly wrong and it all falls out. And it's really annoying. There we go. This is also how you change just the red pedal. You can change just the red pedal very trickily, but without actually removing the entire machine. And now there you go, that's now locked, so when you're you know wheeling the machine around, oh it stood upright. I think that spring sounds all right. Don't jinx it, Sam. Don't jinx it, you idiot. Right. We'll leave all that for now. Let's give us something to do with it, boss. No, we need you in a minute. Now it is time for the motor. Oh dear. First, we have to turn. So we line those three holes up with these three holes. And this is, oh no, look at that. If you remember the video, that before, no, yeah, two videos ago. When, oh, I said a naughty word then. When I put this motor together, I said I wasn't too convinced about this bit. And I was right. I think actually that needs to go like that and then it goes around this way just pretend I'm not doing this because if I <laughs> say so the problem is again you, you do if you do enough of them you'll be alright but if like me, you know, I've probably done about 30 of these, but because I'm not normally filming it, I can sit here for a couple of minutes and think about, you know, what I'm doing. I can look at my own refurb thread. I look at my own refurb threads all the time because they're handy. You know, I think I've got this flipping yoke glue one wrong. I do. I think that kink should be the other side.
I think that's a lot better. <laughs> yes, it is because this white wire does that. See, no matter. So there's probably people that do this a lot of screaming at me right now. I don't blame you. The next thing to do is to push the live and neutral cable through. I didn't show you that. Those two channels there. And then feed this red cable out into there. Like so. So all of the wiring is out of the way. We then need to not forget to put, where did it go? Ah, the seal back on, or you'll soon regret it when it's all nicely bolted up and you have no suction. Again, ask me how I know that. Then in theory we can, Again, it's a it's a it, it's a thing. It's not just nice and simple. Because again, these weren't really designed to have this done to them. People like me have just learned. Put that side in first. Take your left hand ball screw and get it in loosely, but get it in before it all falls apart again. Then you can come down to this side with your right hand ball screw because it's only one screw for now all oh, this room's full of moths I've got the back door open it's really hot and all my lights on and you want the front screw not the sides because this goes on the sides in fact we'll leave that out just this screw Now we need to check which side the clip is. Push that cable in, plug these in, clip it to there and then basically just feed all the cables into where they go. So they're nicely out of the way. And look a little bit like that. Now we now have two red cables. And that's because we need to fit our brush roll on off switch. The switch that kills the brush roll when you tip when you park the machine basically. So you put the screw screw spring back in the cap. Then, I remember how this goes. I can't remember where that goes now. Well, I go away, flies. Well, that's it. We'll put the switch in first because that's going to then show us. I can't remember off my head. The switch goes on that one there. Then, ah, that's it. It's on the chassis. I thought I was missing something. It's that bit there. <laughs> you know, when you look at something, you go, I know this. Why have I had a mind blank? It's because you put the pedals down, and this whole thing goes up behind them. And again, it's a fiddly sod. But it soon goes. I will actually put the screw in. Because again, it will stop it from pigging out everywhere. Like so. And then the spring simply goes behind the little tab and down into there. Like that. See it all up there. So when oh, where are we? It flicks 
back like so. Then we can plug the red wires in again, doesn't matter which one goes where. At all. We can now put our wiring cover on with these three screws. Stand it up. Oh, we're getting close now. Ow. We can fit the brush felt housing and its clip. Mainly because it helps to, you know, steady it. Look. Ooh. I think that spin is correct because it binds on the board otherwise. Well, they're actually they're not nearly done. Well, they are nearly done. This is the hose I mean about. Look, you can see that side's all tatty. And that side isn't. Pop. Try it, because it makes it longer. Pop. Time to move on up. Get cracking with the top. Now we can fit, and we're going to fit the mains cable next, ready? Because I want to quickly fire it up before it gets a bit too late. I'm filming this quite late at night, and I want to just have a quick test run. Because obviously, if it doesn't work, I've got troubleshooting. I, I, I just don't know if the motor works. So we put the mains cable in, feed the bulk of it around where it needs to go. So I'll unpick some of these wires because we need to plug the earth, the earth, the neutral together because the neutral just isn't switched. There we go. And then pop that into a little house, clip it together and then it snaps back into there and all the wiring sort of pushes itself around the place a bit out of the way. Next we need our two switches. And again it's quite simple because the two browns are the mains on off switch. So they go there and then obviously there's a red wire coming off of it. That's the feed wire. Or the brush rod motor and it simply goes on the other switch both the switches are identical so you don't need to worry about that although it helps if you fit them squarely there we go clickety, clickety, clickety. click them both on because trust me now we fit the spring oh, right there now to the on off switch come on focus too much else going on. It's fine, we'll let you off. Flip the on off switch. Now we've got to focus. Because oh. we obviously have the brush roll on off switch. And we need to fit that bit onto there. And then put it spinning. So it does that. Let me turn that out first. Because this goes in first. Then this. And then, and this is again quite tricky to do. You've got to sort of hold the switches out a bit. Flip it around. And stick it down. And it should literally go in first time. Give it a bit of a squeeze. And check you can push both the switches. Flip it over. Making sure they don't fall out. 
and pop the three screws in at the back. Was just vibrated out. At this stage, we can fit the two rubber seals to the chassis, they just push on quite nicely. One and then two. Ah, no, I've done. Loosen the screws to the switch. This is how it, I should have thought, I should have remembered this. Loosen the screws to the switch, put it out slightly because this seal has that bit on it there. That sits behind part of the switch housing. For reasons, who knows? There we go. Aha. Now the cyclone can go on. Do you know what? I'm ready to give it a quick test. Just going to fire it up briefly, just to see if it works. That actually know which is on and which is off. Helpful on some of the early dice, and you can tell from you know, the way the switch sits. So, hang on. Turn that back off at the plug. And it works really, really well. Right. Oh. Let's put the hose in quickly. Well, anyway, that just pushes in from the back and clicks in. a lot of lost air flow through the cyclone, but I think that's just the design of it. <laughs> Being very, very simple. <laughs> just filled that bit up with carpet fiber, oh, you can't even see that. Fill that bit up with carpet fiber. I'm just trying to check that all the suction works, but we've got to put the wand on. Oh, yeah, there's no end cap for it. I forgot about that. That's not the most urgent thing in the world. There. Just put the screw on because we took the wand end cap off for reasons I can't quite remember. Because yes, the hose, the wand has to be fitted. Push down. Light suction leak somewhere. 
Where can that be? Your push down, which is diverted you. Oh, has it though? Have a slightly dicky changeover valve. Why it's slightly dicky, what its flipping problem is, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I think I do. I think this wand is a little bit worn. Fiddlestick. So when it's going in, Yes, it, that needs to be just pushed down a little bit more. In order to make that just that little bit more suction. Ah, <sighs> flop. So we need, I think, a new wand. Oh, I wonder how much one of those will cost. Not a lot I can do with that either. We'll put this back on. That's a good way to test because that is the main suction channel for there. And actually, the only thing we've got to put on now is the tool cap. Which isn't playing ball. Then, finally, for this video, fits the combination tool to there. I shall come back wind the cable up and we can call this video done. Bar the worn one I'm very happy that it works so well. I'm now going to buy it new filters. Have a look at a wand. God, I hope they're cheap. Or well, if I can get one somewhere, I'm sure I can. And you shall see this again for the after video, the normal after video. So there we go, a whole week or taking apart what was a trash Dyson. We are wash and polish, lobbing it back together, troubleshooting it. We've got a warm one. And hopefully when you see this in tomorrow's video, it will go up tomorrow, it'll take me a couple of weeks to work this out now, or a week. It will be lovely and we can see what it is properly like afterwards. So, thank you very much for watching. Links to all of the previous videos will be in the description, so if you just tuned in, you've missed everything, basically. You need to go back and watch again. I even popped into a little playlist. So, hopefully it will play properly as well. So, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.